Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. Is Army Chief General V.K. Singh right in going to court? Has the government mishandled the matter? And could it end up damaging civilian military relations as well as the Army's image? That's the key issue I should explore today with former Army Chief General Shankar Roy Chaudhary. General Roy Chaudhary, let me start with a simple question. In your eyes, is the Army Chief justified in going to court or has he made a terrible mistake? Can the Army Chief go to court? Yes, of course he can. Should he have gone to court? That is an issue which has to be judged in the overall context of events. It's not an open and shut case depending on this court case. It must be examined whether the chief was placed in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a position by uh, events in the background. And how long has this been going on? Because every day the newspaper comes out with something new and every new aspect of the case unfolds. So that, I think, uh, can't get a straight answer or a simple answer. We'll have to examine the whole context in background. Can a chief be placed in a certain position by uh, the turn of events, the rulings of the Ministry of Defense, where he has no option but to go to court? In other words, you're suggesting it's possible that General V.K. Singh was boxed into a corner and left with no option but to go to court. In other words, he was almost forced to go to court. I think so. I think so. The question when, he, when I see the newspaper uh, headlines now and also on the visual media, it's about honor and dignity. Now, these are very, uh, these are very, these are very uh, philosophical terms which cannot be defined in the law. Yet, these are the very basis on which the army rests. And I do feel that General V. K. Singh is an extremely honorable man. Okay. I do not think he would compromise on the honor uh, unless he was driven to it. I'll come manner. to this question of honor and dignity in a moment's time, General Roy Chaudhary, but let me put to you a view put across by many people. They say, is it fitting and proper for a serving army chief to take his own government to court? Should he not have first resigned and then taken this step? That is the point of view expressed by many, but then again, that uh, you take the basic position. If a serving uh, major or a serving colonel can go to court, I don't really see in principle why the chief shouldn't go to court. But as I said earlier, should he have gone to court? That we can debate on. You don't think that the chief's position, unlike that of a serving major and colonel, is unique? He's not just an individual. He represents the very army that he heads. And therefore, in that sense, he is an institution. I agree with you. I agree with you. But it must be accepted also that, uh, in view, in, uh, apart from his rank, basically he is an army officer, an army person with an army person's rights. So what is the issue that forced a chief to go to court? Because uh, that really has to be gone into. I'll come uh, to that issue no in a moment's time, if I may, General Rajchaudhary. But one more question on going to court. I accept that as an army officer, he has rights. But what about the view that armies all over the world operate on the basis of one cardinal principle, that orders must be obeyed without demur and questioning? Could you argue that General V.K. Singh is guilty of breaching that principle? That is a, that is a basic principle, all right. But then uh, there are, there are, there are uh, organizations outside the army which take advantage of this basic principle and try to force things upon the army, decisions which the army doesn't like but has to accept. All right, let's come to some of the key facts that make up this case. It's fairly clear that all the documents bar two, including his birth certificate and his school leaving certificate, and the Supreme Court has indicated that the school leaving certificate is the critical one, all suggest that he was born in 1951. It's only the UPSC form for entering the NDA, which was filled in when he was 14 by a tutor, which suggests that he was born in 1950, and an IMA dossier that's based upon it. In fact, even the Adjutant General's branch of the Army, which is the official record keeper, shows his date of birth is 1951. So would you accept that practically all the evidence is in the General's favor? I would accept that, and uh, the government should have examined this, all these aspects long time ago. 
because things as they are moving now are not very conducive to the dignity of the army or the dignity of the government itself. Except there is a problem, is there not, General Roy Chaudhary? At least on two occasions, sometimes newspapers suggest on three occasions, General V.K. Singh in writing has accepted that he was born in 1950. In your eyes, does that acceptance vitiate his case or do you accept his claim that the acceptance happened under pressure and secondly, conditionally? I would like to say that we should go into the circumstances which made him declare in writing that he is prepared to accept 1950 as his date of birth. What were the circumstances? We don't know enough about it. What were the pressures put on him? Well, and by who? It seems that the circumstances were first when he was a corps commander awaiting promotion to army commander and then again when he was army commander waiting to become chief. And on both occasions he was given the clear impression that if he didn't accept 1950, he would be denied promotion. Is that a, there in you your are. eyes, mitigating set of circumstances? Well, if you are a professional soldier, as we all were at one time and others are at now, uh, you joined the army, of course, for honor, duty and country, but also to make a career of it. So anything that affects the career, particularly getting the top spot, and at that particular jun jun juncture, uh, some person or some organization uh, uh, says that unless you sign uh, this undertaking, you will not be promoted. I think it would bring severe pressure on him. So in those circumstances where his career and his promotion was at stake, the pressure is understandable and therefore he under pressure understood understandably accepted 1950 that's what you're saying I think yes that's what I'm saying let me quote to you from the letter General VK Singh wrote on the 12th of November 2009 to his predecessor Chief General Deepak Kapoor remember this letter was sent just four months before General VK Singh himself became army chief and in the letter he says I have learnt of some misgivings and doubts being raised on my commitment given on my date of birth as per your directions. You are well aware that I have not gone back on this commitment. And then he adds, I once again reiterate that my commitment to you stands and any doubt of misgivings needs to be dispelled. To you, does that sound as if it's written under pressure and conditionally? Or does it sound as if it's written voluntarily and willingly? I think it was written when he understood that there were pressures at work and uh, some of them were conveyed to him possibly by the previous chief, by his previous chief. So he wanted to uh, clarify his position and say that, all right, under the circumstances, I'll accept uh, what is being stated as my uh, date of birth. In other words, because you're leaving me no choice to do so, I have to accept it because if I don't, I won't get the promotion that I deserve. I think one should take it, at least I take it that way. Now, as you mentioned earlier, and as General V.K. Singh himself has repeatedly said, he is fighting for his integrity and honor. Do you accept that or do you also think there's some truth to the alternate view that in the process he's put his own interests ahead of the army's interests, he's put self before service? No, I think that's a very wrong view. Uh, I, apart from my personal knowledge of General V.K. Singh, I think basically a soldier is a man of honor. I do not think that he would put in such a complaint and take it to this stage just for the sake of one year's uh, extension. I don't think so at all. I think this word integrity, honor, uh, all these are legally indefinable terms but vital to an army officer and I think General V.K. Singh is telling the truth. Now, as you say, General V.K. Singh is a man of honor. He's fighting for his honor and integrity. But was not the same honor and integrity compromised when on two occasions in writing he accepted 1950 as his date of birth, knowing that it was the wrong date of birth? As I said again in, your, in response to your earlier question, there were pressures at work uh, on his career. So I think he... Uh, under those pressures, he wrote that certificate. It does not compromise his honor, I don't think. Why were those pressures put on him? What and what, what were those pressures? Now, on the other hand, people say that if the army chief believes his date of birth is A, B or C and the government refuses to accept, that is tantamount to holding the army chief to be a liar. 
Is that how you view the government's refusal to accept the army chief's date of birth? I don't think the government realizes that when you doubt the word of an army chief, or any officer for that matter, but particularly an army chief, when he is, when he is, in a, when he is placed in a position where they have to have recourse to a, a statutory complaint, uh, I think the uh, government should have realized that because it is a matter of honor. And honor, as I said, is a concept which is foreign to uh, me most organizations, except, I like to think, the defense services. General Chaudhary, let's take a break at that point. When I come back, I want to talk to you about the manner in which the government has handled this situation. That's in a moment's time. See you after the break. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and a special interview with former Army Chief General Shankar Rai Chaudhary. General Rai Chaudhary, let's broaden our discussion and look at the government's handling of this matter. Would you accept that by allowing this situation to continue and fester, the government has handled it very badly? Uh, I would do that because I think these, this situation surfaced many years ago. I'm not going into the exact dates, but 2006 is the, is the one year being quoted. Surely between 2006 and when the uh, general took over as chief, this, these matters should have been put right. Now, I have it from unimpeachable sources, sadly I'm not at liberty to reveal who they are, that on three different occasions, in separate meetings with the defense secretary, the defense minister, and then finally the finance minister, the army chief was asked how this matter should be resolved, and he said the way to do so was for the government to issue a statement saying that on the basis of the certificates he's shown, they accept that 1951 is his date of birth, and then adding significantly in the same statement that he was appointed army chief in the belief that his date of birth was 1950, therefore his retirement was fixed for May 2012, and now that retirement date will be maintained regardless of the amendment in his date of birth. Sadly, the government did not accept this resolution suggested to them. Do you think the government was wrong in refusing to accept this resolution? As I said, it's very difficult to accept a concept of honor outside the services. So I think the government uh, could not appreciate uh, what was being said. And I do think the government should have accepted his word, uh, again, on the principle of honor. In fact, this offer, this resolution that was suggested to the government by General V. K. Singh is still, many believe, the most credible, sensible way of sorting out the matter. Would you accept that it is still the most sensible solution? I would think so. I would agree with that. But is it still, is there still time to adopt that solution? That is the point. Now that we've gone to court, events may take on their own momentum. That's what you're saying? That's right. To what extent do you believe Defense Minister Anthony has failed to show the requisite judgment and tact that this tricky situation required? Well, I wouldn't want to name names, but certainly the government could have handled the case better with uh, having regard and respect for a, for a chief of a service, which, as you said earlier, is really a very unique position. And uh, I think they should have shown one, more understanding rather than go by the uh, pages of an order which directs that if you want a change of birth, a uh, change of date of birth, you will, uh, you should have put it in w up before completion of five years of service. Yes, I think they should have uh, given it uh, more consideration, uh, having regard to the fact that it has arisen. In other words, the government has been narrow and technical in their approach rather than broad-minded, generous, and sensible. Uh, I would not, uh, I would not say that in respect of the minister, because the minister is a very fine person. But certainly the Ministry of Defense, which is the arm of the government that more or less uh, controls the defense services, they have been guilty of not putting a broad approach to it. In other words, you're blaming the civil servants of the Ministry of Defense rather than the minister who heads the Ministry of Defense? Uh, I would think so. I would think so. This is a case where uh, the minister also should have exercised his judgment and, uh, and taken a decision on the case. So the minister should have possibly overruled the bureaucratic advice he was getting? 
Perhaps, yes. That would, would have been better. Now, General Roy Chaudhary, so far we've been focusing on the government's alleged mishandling of this situation, but the truth is, long before this became a problem for the government, it was a problem for the army because two different branches of the army, the adjutant general's branch and the military secretary's branch, had different dates of birth for General VK Singh. To what extent is the army itself responsible for failing to sort out this matter? I think it's appalling. And the fact that two branches of the same headquarters at different dates should have been rectified years, decades earlier. Because this has been going on for a long time. So I think uh, it's appalling. And uh, I only hope that there are no other such cases pending. I think the Army headquarters should make a, a review of its own personal documentation of the officers. Now, General V.K. Singh has let it be known that in 2008, when he first gave a commitment that he would accept 1950 as his date of birth in the larger interest of the organization, he did so, having received an assurance from General Deepak Kapoor, who was the Army Chief of the time, that the matter would be sorted out. Unfortunately, the matter was never sorted out, and repeated letters sent to General Kapoor were left unanswered. So do you get the feeling that General V.K. Singh was either led up the garden path or let down by his bosses? I, since it concerns two former, uh, a former chief and a serving chief, uh, I would prefer not to comment on it. All right, you're being diplomatic. Let me put something else to you. General V.K. Singh has also let it be known that successive military secretaries insisted on 1950 being maintained as his date of birth because they claimed to change the date of birth would affect not the, simply the line of succession, but four lines of succession. And Outlook magazine has now commented this week that this suggests manipulation, perhaps politics at the very top of the army to secure lines of succession to place friends rather than the best men at the top. How do you view that situation? I, I, I will answer the second half of your question later, or probably I will not answer it. But your first part of your question, uh, that the army itself is at fault, uh, that is definitely so. And someone needs to find out why this, how this date came in, in any case, 1950. Someone needs to go into that. And again, for the future, are there any other such cases? But is there politics at the top where chiefs, military secretaries, army headquarters tries to place favorites in line of succession rather than necessarily the best man? One hopes not. One certainly hopes not. It is going to be very bad for the services if such an uh, arrangement is in place. The maximum you can plan ahead is maybe the next chief, definitely, and perhaps the chief after that, when you have to... Uh, when you have to look at the records of a number of bright officers who are steadily making the grade. But going back four, generation, uh, four, uh, four uh, lines of command, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's, frankly, that's rubbish. General Roy Chaudhary, you began your answer with the word, one hopes not. In other words, you're hoping that there isn't politics and manipulation at the top, but you can't say that with certainty. As I said, one hopes not. To what extent, and I put this question to you as a former army chief to whom this institution is very dear, to what extent has the army's image suffered as a result of this sorry situation? I, it has suffered, but it has suffered earlier also. You take it back to the 1962 and the, day, and the days of General BM Call. You take it back to the tiff between General Thimaya and uh, uh, VK Krishna Menon. So the army has taken a few knocks, including uh, recently these uh, so-called scams that have come up. So the army's, uh, army has taken a few knocks, and, uh, but the army as an institution, I think, is still uh, eminently preeminent. The concept of honor still guides most of our officers, and the instances of breach of honor should be taken note of by the serving officers and ensure that this is not repeated because this is something which, re if repeatedly uh, it comes to light, will hurt the image of the army as an institution. And okay. I think nobody wants that. One other quick question. Have army values, perhaps particularly at the top, deteriorated in recent years? I don't believe that. People say so. 
but I think when an officer starts off in the service, he is inculcated the sense of honor, self before self before service, the uh, this, uh, the Chetwood motto. All this is rigidly in incorporated into him, and he starts off believing uh, what he's taught. All right, and uh, tries to keep it up as he progresses up the chain of command. My very last question. Has General V.K. Singh's image suffered as a result of this? Surprising. He's an excellent officer. And I hope it does not suffer. You hope it does not suffer. Once again, that word hope. No certainty, just a hope. General Shankar Rai Chaudhary, thank you very much for speaking to Devil's Advocate.